Hello Minecrafters, this is BBMA, and you're watching another one of my Let's Play Minecraft video series. This is episode three, and I've been doing a lot of work. So I, I, I did a lot of work off camera. It was labor intensive. It took forever. So I decided, uh, although I recorded a lot of footage about it, I decided it was just too boring um, to, to show you what I really should have done is done a time lapse the problem is is this actually took me um quite a many hours over like a two week period so uh, i was working on that quite a bit in in many minecraft hours uh trying to get this done so you might be asking yourself what the heck are we looking at bb main are you crazy why did it take so much work well i'll tell you what it is this is my big ocean dig the idea here is I want to dig out a, a central chunk in, the ocean, in this ocean area. I used the ocean area because I thought, hey, it'll probably be easier to dump sand down into the ocean and excavate that than using a lot of tools, digging up dirt and uh, stone. That was my theory anyway. In truth, it's actually equal, probably equally labor intensive either way, but um, that was the theory. And so that's why I located in the ocean. You say, well, why, why so big? Well, I want to dig out 10 chunks in all directions around the central chunk. So I want to create a perimeter of 10 chunks. I'm playing on a survival multiplayer server. And so when I'm down in that chunk, the 10 chunks surrounding me are also loaded. And so if we excavate all of these chunks eventually over time, um, we'll be able to create down to the bedrock. We'll be able to create a hugely efficient uh, monster farm or uh, basically any type of uh, farm system that we want to create. An iron golem farm, a monster farm, a friendly mob farm, whatever. Uh, we can do all kinds of crazy things. But to do that, we need to do the excavation. And so I've started. Uh, this was the central chunk I started with and I excavated one chunk around it in every direction okay so you're probably saying well that's cool what what is this bias well first of all it's going to be really cool it's going to allow us to build really efficient monster farms one cool thing is the lc parameter that's going to increase our efficiency so in this chunk that i'm standing in the chunk that has the pillar the lc parameter is 95 well um you know, really, it's not quite 95. It, it is, but I'll show you why. Um, this border is really not that high, this uh, grid around the chunk. But that pillar, which is in the chunk behind it, actually has the ladders on it. So the ladders are protruding into this chunk, and they're up quite high. And so the LC parameter of this chunk is 95. This chunk over here is 63, which is because of the grid border up there. This chunk in the center is 47. So I took the grid border off up there and we've excavated down to here. And you can see that 47 is the block index of the section of the chunk with the highest non-air block into it. So uh, basically probably these chests are the tallest thing in this chunk. So let's get up there. Um, this chest is at uh, Y41. So that's a uh, that's a non-air block. That's probably the highest block in this chunk. And so the top of that section that the block 41 is in would be 47. And so that's what the LC parameter is. Now, there's some sort of weird bug. You'll see that the LC parameter has flipped to 79. I don't know why that is. It's random. I can't really figure out or control why it does it. I've logged a bug. And uh, hopefully Mojang fixes it soon. But uh, technically, this if I log out the client and come back in, the LC parameter will be 47 again. So, cool. That's why we did it. So, yeah. So this was a huge piece of work. We excavated out. We used uh, two methods. Uh, one, I used sand. And so I poured sand in meticulously. Uh, for the 16 by 16 area of the chunks around, you know, along the edge too, along the, creating a wall, a coffer wall, so to speak. And then I use torches to excavate the sand. So 
um, let me see if I, I have some gravel here, so I'll demonstrate. So let's say we had a huge wall of a huge thing of sand going all the way up. And we can come along the bottom and we can either excavate out below it with a shovel or something and place torches. And the falling um, entity that is the gravel can't land on that torch. And so it's converted into an item. And so that's true for sand as well. So that's one. The excavation part was fairly easy. I mean, probably a 15 minutes or maybe a half hour per chunk. The filling into the chunk was probably two to four hours per chunk. So huge. The second method I tried um, was using reeds. So reeds are pretty cool. I, I grew a whole bunch of reeds and basically I would go down to the bottom of the ocean. I would create rows of reeds and that was cool because I could stand in there and I wouldn't drown. Um, the reeds create an air pocket, but it wasn't really any faster. And technically, I could only do, you know, two rows, two rows of reeds like this. I could do two rows of reeds, and then I had to have a row of water source blocks in between. And so, you know, to do that, I would still have to come up above and drop sand in those channels in between, and then the sand would cause the reeds to break because the water source blocks would be gone. So. It, w it, w it worked, but it, it wasn't any faster. And so those are my two methods so far. I would appreciate comments from users if they have any other ideas. Um, one thing that would have worked really great is if we had sand generation still, sand duplication. Um, we could have used sand duplication to create a sand generation machine up there and just push the sand in and you know go off AFK for an hour or so and come back and the whole section would be filled. That would have worked great. But... We're on 147 now, and that's just not going to be possible. So we'll have to deal with that. And, you know, technically it was a bug. So, you know, I, I, would, uh, I was reluctant to take advantage of an exploit anyway, and so it's probably best that we didn't. The second thing I did is I wanted to see for a given chunk, if I excavated from level 18 down to the bedrock, basically the area where diamonds exist, how many diamonds and other ores I could find. So just for fun, I dug out this chunk and you know I found redstone and coal, a little bit of gold, some lapis lazuli, iron, um, and one tiny lone diamond that was buried is buried under this bedrock here. There's a, a one diamond block down there. I started excavating the chunk next to it and I did find some diamonds over there, so that's great. Um, but so yeah, if you're curious to what a chunk looks like from 18 to uh, the bedrock, you know, with all the stone and dirt and gravel excavated and just leaving the ores. That's what it looks like. And so I think we'll try and do a little more of that as long as we don't need resources. If we have resources, we might have to make a decision. If we need resources, a lot of resources, we might have to make a decision. But for now, I think we're doing okay on those types of resources. All right, so that's it here. I'm going to show you the next project I did. Okay, looks like the rain isn't going to stop anytime soon, so I'll just go ahead and record. Uh, the other project I did is I wanted to take care of our food situation. So I built this automated food farm. It has six terraces, three, three on top and three on the bottom. And I have wheat, carrots, and potatoes growing in there. And I tried to make it look like a kind of a Mayan temple, you know, Mayan ruins. And, and I think... I think it looks pretty sharp. You can see in there, there's, uh, I still have access to the redstone. Uh, basically, the way this one works is I have a row of pistons there that are blocking water and a row of pistons there. Um, not the most efficient mechanism that I wanted to, you know, have this look of the, you know, the walls coming down and water pouring in and, uh, you know, washing down all the crops. And I think that I achieved that. So later on in the episode, uh, when the food's all grown in, I'll come back here and uh, demonstrate how that works. Okay, the third uh, project I had is I started uh, Nether Hub system. So um, there's a portal that goes back to my base and here's another portal. And I'm starting to work on a transit system using minecarts to get back and forth. So not too fancy at the moment, just basic functionality. Um, we'll be expanding this as we go on. This portal 
leads us to a stronghold. So, um, just go down here. You can't really tell it's a stronghold because I started excavating some of it, but here we are. Uh, this... This uh, <laughs> this portal is now located in the stronghold. We placed it here so we can do some work. And so basically, um, Ethan B 501 and Ian B 501 and myself um, grabbed some Ender Balls and we wandered around in the wilderness using the um, the Ender Pearls. And we tracked down this uh, stronghold. And so we came down here and. Battled out a little bit, did some exploring, and we covered up this silverfish farm here. So this is something we're going to do in this episode. A silverfish farm? Why would you want to build a silverfish farm? <laughs> uh, beyond that, I like to make farms of everything, because I'm just crazy that way. I really enjoy the technical side of Minecraft. But also because I want to use this. So I would like to generate silverfish from this farm and put them in an AFK area, perhaps in the nether or something like that, in an unloaded chunk, somewhere. And then I want to transport those silverfish to the big ocean dig and use them to do excavation of stone. I think that would be really cool. So this project will probably take us a uh, couple episodes, but um, I think it'll be really cool. And today, uh, one thing we can do is get started on the silverfish farm. Okay, so let's check out our resource situation. We've got, I think, most of the materials. What I need is more redstone. So I'd, uh, I need a bunch of redstone lamps to be able to turn on and off the, uh, the silverfish farm. So let me go mining for some redstone and we'll be back after that. Okay, so I did a little mining, uh, a little bit of caving down there, dug a little mine shaft, and I was able to find 58. Uh, redstone ore blocks. So let's see how many redstone ore we can get using a Fortune 3 pickaxe. So this should be interesting. Just stack all these up. This is one of my epic pickaxes that I have. I haven't managed to lose in the uh, in the lava yet or drop in the void or anything like that so let's see how we do all right so wow yeah so that worked out really well I don't know how much I had in my inventory, maybe five already. And there was a stack here. So yeah, almost five stacks. That's uh that was a lot. Okay. I'm going to prepare a couple things and I'll see you in the spawner chamber. Okay, so the spawning area for silverfish is basically eight by eight by three. Um, to make it a little easier, I'm going to do a 9 by 8 by 3. But um, in effect, this, uh, the portal to the end actually blocks off a little bit of that spawning area. So it will be a little less. So let's start by working with the, uh, the 9 by 6 area that uh, I have defined starting here. So... It's going to be three blocks, so one block below, one block below the spawner, one block above. So let's uh, throw the glowstone lamps up here. And we're just going to spam the lamps everywhere, and then we'll use uh, redstone to power them. Silverfish can spawn in, I believe, a light level of 11 or below so if you want to stop the spawning you have to have a lot of light all right so i need a few more lanterns and i'll go those get those and i'll get some redstone and we'll be back okay so for now that's what i have i'll have to make another trip to the nether unfortunately but uh that's what i have for now so let's uh let's test this out 
a switch up here. Actually, sorry, that was horrible. Let's put the switch up here. Okay. Let's see how we did. All right. There we go. That's just temporary. We'll uh, lay this out a little more efficiently uh, once we're done. So the next stage is to, and that's one, two, three, four. One, two, let's get up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So just to make it symmetrical, I made it a nine. A nine by six with these little, out, the little shapes that jut out. So the next step is to, uh, to put some walls in and build the floor. So I will work on that and we'll be back soon. So here's the level of the lights. This is the, the level of the spawner will be is in here. And there's one block above and one block below. We're gonna, I'm going to put water on this level. So the floor actually has to be uh, right there. So I will do that. Okay, so I wanted to match up with the end portal, the look. I didn't have any end stone because I haven't actually been to the end yet. But I did have some sandstone and some nether brick. So I'm using nether brick and smooth sandstone, smooth sandstone for the floor. And I'll use nether brick for the walls. And I'm going to do some sort of pattern in here, I think. And um, this will be pretty cool. So this is the, the start. Let me, um, let me continue on up and finish up the walls. And, and we'll start talking about the pattern we want to put in. All right, just uh, experiment with a couple of design ideas. I think this has promise. Let me, uh, I think I like this uh, sandstone cross look. And uh, we'd have two of those with the pillars. Uh, so um, let me put that in and see how it looks. Be right back. Okay, I think that looks nice. Um, so leave me a comment if you think uh, different design could be done. I, I did change the stairs because I wasn't sure if the silverfish might actually be able to squirm out of that little hole. And so uh, I'm going to have glass on one end anyway, so I think I will have glass on one end. So I didn't really need uh, holes into the machine on this side, but I, I like that. I think that looks uh, nice. Well, okay, as you saw, I kind of slipped off the portal and went to the end. I wasn't expecting to do that yet. I, I wasn't prepared. I was going to make a bunch of snowballs and, and go to the end and, and do it that way. But, um, you know, it, it happened. I was uh, trapped there, so I did battle the Ender Dragon. Luckily, I had, uh, I had a really decent bow. And uh, I, hopefully I could fix this bow because it's uh, awesome. I had a really decent bow and some arrows. And so I was able to defeat him and retrieve the super special dragon egg. So that's awesome. All right, back to the stronghold. Okay, so here the outside is basically created. Let me just give you a tour. This is the uh, portal here. I've put uh, some different color sandstone and nether brick around there. That looks pretty nice. Here's the sides with the stairs, the other brick stairs. Looks pretty good. And the back, I'm going to put some glass in the back. So that'll look uh, nice. And uh, basically, we'll just real quick go up on the top. And uh, we'll have glowstone lamps here and here. 
And we just need some more, uh, actually, redstone lamps. Sorry, we'll have redstone lamps there and there, and also back here. That'll finish it up. And, uh, yeah, looks really nice. And so, uh, next step is to go get some more glowstone for the lamps to finish this up, and then I will uh, start the work on the inside. So we've got the lights, we've got the walls. We've got a temporary floor in. I think the next step is to remove all the dirt and gravel and see how see how we're doing. So I'm going to go in there and do that. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the redstone lamps are preventing them from spawning. But we also shouldn't see. Okay, I seem to have the spawning under control. I threw some torches in here temporarily to figure out what the problem is. So the light level needs to be 12 or above to stop the silver fish spawning at every block. So that's what you need to do. Okay, so we're almost ready for the water streams. I dropped the floor down one. This is based on a design by Panda. So when I put the water streams, two water streams in the corner, it's going to flow and push all the silverfish to this square. So as they fall here, if we um, have our water stream there, as they fall, you'll see that um, there's a kind of a a block here, almost a full block of water, and the silverfish are small enough to get stuck in that hole. So the way you prevent that is by putting fences there. Fences are one and a half blocks high, so that extra half a block will prevent the silverfish from getting stuck in these spots. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and there we go. So even as I walk on them, you see there's a, a little step up. So that will prevent the silverfish from getting stuck under the water. So now all we'd have to do is add our two water streams. I have uh, two buckets here for that. I'm back. So a uh, quick trip to the nether. Get some more glowstone, make some more redstone lamps. And I put in the redstone lamps here and here and finished it off there. And I found I was still getting a little bit of spawning. Uh, the problem was this block right here and right here I had another brick there and uh, it was casting enough of a shadow that, that there was a spawning area down there that was a block level light level or block light level of 11 which uh, is a spawnable area. So now I, when I have it on, its spawning is completely stopped. And when I turn it off, they come like madmen. So, cool. Machine's working. So, the next step is to create a portal. Uh, extend this water stream a little bit, create a portal to send them to the nether and store them so that uh, we can build up a large number of silverfish. So I'll work on that and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I've uh, had the machine on for a little while. Uh, spawn rates are decent, but not great. I think the light from the end portal back there is... Uh, inhibiting the spawn rate a little bit, but it's working. So I've let the silverfish go um, to the end for a bit, and so now it's time to uh, use them. I'm sorry my video's uh, choppy. Maybe, maybe it doesn't appear choppy to you, but it's choppy to me. I uh, switched hard drives recently, so I, I bought some bigger capacity hard drives for recording videos. And um, I'm a big fan of Western Digital, so I bought some um, 
Western Digital green drives because I thought, well, you know, they're those would be good for um, just data storage, right? Because I, I don't need really fast performance. But uh, apparently, um, it affects my speed that I can record at. So used, I used to use the uh, Caviar Blacks. Now I'm using the Caviar Greens, and that apparently it makes a big difference. So that's why the choppiness is there occasionally. So let's just check real quick. Um, we have about 75 silverfish in there. This is my little storage area. I'm going to let them out here and hopefully I don't get killed and I'm going to try to lead them to my base. Let's, uh, I'm just going to real quick run down here and make sure everything's set up for them and I'll be right back. Okay, I improved the system a little bit. I uh, built this uh, enclosure around the portal where the silverfish are coming through and I have this uh, switch that activates the piston so silverfish can, is, they'll track me and they'll start coming towards me but they won't be able to get me because of this uh, too deep trench that they'll be in with this glass block so they'll see me and track me but they won't be able to get to me and so now I can guide them safely to the other portal to get them where I need. So let's do that. I think there's about 120 silverfish in here. And as you can see, they're all tracking me nicely. It's a little laggy with so many of them. I'm going to lead these guys to the big ocean dig. And I'll see you there. All right, we're back. So as you can see from the montage, I played around with the silverfish a little bit and I did die a few times. So those little buggers can be dangerous if you get caught in a uh, confined space with them. But uh, there we go. <coughs> <coughs> but uh, there we go. As you can see, we have used the silverfish or primarily the silverfish anyway, to dig down to the bedrock. So there you go. It's not a, a great method, but it certainly is an entertaining method. And so I think I'll play around them a little bit more and see if we can get them to be more effective. But uh, there we go. So just real quickly, I'm going to go back to the uh, my multi-terrace farm, and I'm going to show you that, and then we'll wrap the episode up. Okay, here we are. All three terraces are basically completed and growing. And so each I have a switch for each uh, section. And the switch controls both the upper water and the lower water. So we'll just uh, flick these on. You can see the water over there for the wheat farm. There's the carrots. And if I can stand here, you'll be able to see a little better. Uh, the potatoes. <laughs> so I think that's a it's a pretty good look. Now with the um, the new updates coming out, you know we could uh, put some hoppers down here in the bottom and um, use hoppers to transport the farm items straight to a chest. So that'll be very neat. So we'll take a look at that when 1.5 comes out. But for now, let's just collect all these and see how we did. All right, a couple of got potatoes got caught up there. Um, so five stacks of carrots, one, two, three, four, five stacks of five stacks and more of potatoes and. A couple stacks of wheat and four stacks or three and a half stacks of seeds. So there we go. There's my little farm. 
All right, so uh, let me turn off the water. So there we go. That's uh, episode number three. I showed you my farm up here. I showed you the big ocean dig that we're working on, the nether hub that we've started to put in. And so things are progressing nicely. Oh, and we have our silverfish spawner working now. And so we can generate uh, silverfish whenever we need. So that's pretty exciting. I think uh, for the next episode, um, now that we've gone to the end and we've dispatched the Ender Dragon, um, we might start thinking about an Enderman Ender. So uh, there's some great designs out there. I'd love to, I've never built one before, so I think that would be great. As always, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate a like, uh, or maybe you could throw a subscribe in there if you really enjoyed the episode and you'd like to see more. Those, uh, those likes and subscribes really help me know that uh, people are interested and think they're cool videos. And uh, throw me a comment. Uh, great to hear from you. I'd love to hear your ideas, the things that we can do in this world, uh, what types of things you would like to see and what you enjoy. This is a little bit of a longer episode, but I wanted to make sure I got the silverfish spawner in there, so I hope that was okay. If it's not, uh, once again, uh, throw me a comment. Let me know. All right. Uh, until next time, goodbye.